All right, 7.3, hypothesis test and p-value. So we're going to learn how to actually do some calculations with hypothesis test and then make some conclusions about hypothesis tests. And we are specifically looking about hypothesis tests for proportions still, only proportions from here on out. So what is the p-value? So the p-value is a probability of getting the sample statistic that we observed or a more extreme sample statistic, so or farther away, if the null hypothesis is true. So what happens is we assume the null hypothesis to be true. We make a normal distribution around the null hypothesis, a normal sampling distribution. We figure out how far away our sample statistic is and what's the probability of being at that point or farther away. So once we find the p-value, we compare it to a predetermined significance level called alpha. And this is the letter we use for alpha. So sometimes I'll write it like that. Usually it, it's, it's 5%. So usually we'll write 0 0.05 is what we want for alpha, and we'll compare our p-value to 0 0.05. And then what we do is if p is less than alpha, we end up rejecting the null hypothesis. So we get a very small probability of getting the sample we got, but we did get that sample, so that means we're going to reject our null hypothesis. We have evidence for the alternative hypothesis, in other words. And if p is greater than or equal to alpha, we fail to reject. So we don't accept anything. We just don't reject it. So we don't have enough evidence yet, and maybe we could take another sample and it'd be different, but for this sample, we don't have enough evidence. So the way we usually remember this is this phrase, if P is low, reject the hoe. All right, so you can start using the word hoe now in class if you want. So if P is low, reject the hoe. So here is the process that we follow to find the p-value. So the first thing we have to do is we still have to state both hypotheses with the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. All right, then we have to look, we'll, we actually have some data. We'll have to write down what's our p hat value. That's our sample data. All right, so what's the proportion we have? Then we want to calculate the sampling standard deviation and the mean. All right, so the sampling mean will just be p, the sampling standard deviation. There's the formula for it. It's on the next slide, so we'll check it out there. Then we'll determine the direction by drawing the normal curve. So, like, we'll draw a normal curve. Do, 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 do. There's our normal curve. Our, our null hypothesis value will be here in the middle, which is just P equals P naught. All right. And that will be the mean. And then at some point we'll have this P hat value, like say up here or maybe down here, depending on if the alternative is that P is greater than something, or if it's less then it will be down here below it. And then we'll find the probability of being at this point or farther up using normal CDF. So we'll just use a normal CDF like we've been doing for the last two or three units now. All right, so here's an example. All right, so we're gonna stick with the example that we've been doing with the trash ball shots. So Mr. Ripson made 71 out of 100 shots. The claim was that he made 80% of his shots. We believe that it's less than 80%. What are the, first of all, what are the hypothesis and his P hat value? So the null hypothesis is that P, which we've already defined before as the proportion of shots he makes, is 80%. Our alternative hypothesis is we think it's less than 80%. And P hat is our sample data. So P hat is 71 out of 100, which is 0.71. And this 100 here is our N, our sample size. So next up, what are the mean and standard deviation for this sampling distribution? for his shots with n equals 100. So our sample size was 100, so we want to look at what's the sampling distribution information. So the mean of the sampling distribution is if we just look over here, it should be that null hypothesis value, 80%. The standard deviation for the sampling distribution is just this formula right here. All right, so it's the square root of our null hypothesis p, one minus our null hypothesis p divided by n. So we'll just do the square root of 0.80 1 minus 0.80, and then divide by 100. All right, so we can throw that in our calculator and get an actual value. So there's our calculator. So we've got the square root. Let's see if it'll turn back on here. This second square root, 0 0.80 times 1 minus 0.80 divided by 100. And we get 0 0.04. Oh, well, that's nice. Usually it's like a long decimal and something, but just 0.04, that's plenty. Usually we want three decimal places if it's got three decimal places. 
And now what's the probability of being at or below, since we did this less than, we were talking about below here, the value of p hat for this data. So if we just sketch a little normal curve, in the middle is 0.80. We're at 0.71, All right? That was our p hat. And we wanna be at that or farther away, so that'd be or below. So to find this little area here, we would do normal CDF. Our lower bound would be way, way down below this, so like zero. Our upper bound is going to be the 0.71. Our mean is the 0.80, and our standard deviation is 0.04. And whatever we get for our answer is our p-value. All right, so let me move this out of the way here. So second distribution, normal CDF number two, we're going from zero to 0.71 with a mean of 0.80 and a standard deviation of 0.04. And we'll paste that, and 0.012. Really two decimal places is what we want here, 0 0.01. So this right here is our p-value. It's the probability of being at this point, our sample statistic p-hat, or more extreme, in this case, farther down, if the null hypothesis, the 80%, is the true mean. So what would be the conclusion at the 5% significance level? So how does this 0 0.01 compare to 5%, which is 0 0.05? So the p-value, equals 0 0.01, which is less than 0 0.05, which is our alpha value, or we can say our significance level. So since it's less than that, we, since our p is low, we reject the ho. So we are rejecting this. That means we're going with the alternative. So we have evidence that p is less than 0.80. All right, our P is less than 80%. All right, so that's how we do these problems. So there's two more examples here. So the principal claims that 50% of students at a large high school are female, but you think the true value is more than 50%. You take a random sample and find that 110 out of 200 are female. Is there significant evidence of more than 50% female at the 5% level? All right, so we start off with our hypotheses. Our null hypothesis is that we're at 50%, but we think it's actually more than 50%. P is greater than 0.50. All right, our P hat value is 110 out of 200, which actually works out to 0.55. So it is above 50, but we don't know if it's significantly above 50% or just a little bit above 50%. So now what we do is we find the mean of our sampling distribution, which is just the 0.50 and our standard deviation, which is the square root of 0.50, one minus 0.50, divided by our sample size, which right there was 200. So we're gonna throw that into our calculator and see what we get. Second square root, 0.50, one minus 0 0.50, 0 0.5 is the same as 0.50, divided by 200, and we get 0 0.035. So three decimal places there. All right, so now we've got this sampling distribution. We've got 0.50 here as our mean. Our sample p hat is up here somewhere above it at 0.55. So there's our p hat. And we wanna know what's the probability of being here or farther away, so or more extreme, so or higher, because it's greater than. So we do normal CDF. The lower bound is 0.55. The upper bound is something big. The mean is 0.50. The standard deviation is what we calculated here, 0.035, and we throw that in our calculator. All right, so second distribution, normal CDF number two. We're going from 0.55 up to something big. We've got 0.50 as our mean and 0.35. 0.035 as our standard deviation, and we get 0 0.076. So our p-value works out to 0.76, or 0.7, or 0 0.07, or if you want 0 0.08, if we want to round up or round down, either way, that's fine. All right, but we're comparing that to 5%, which is 0 0.05.
So if 7% or 8% or 7.6% is greater than that. So we say that our p-value equals 0 0.07, which is greater than 0 0.05, which is our alpha. So p is not low. That means we do not reject. So we fail to reject the hoe. So that p equals 0.50. So we don't have significant evidence that it's greater than 50. Right? We don't have evidence that it's still equal to 50, but we don't have significant evidence that it's greater than 50. So we don't say we have evidence for it. All right, last one here. So the local mayor claims that 25% of residents in her town are registered as Republicans. A random sample of 300 townspeople finds that 85 are Republicans. Is there significant evidence at the 5% significance level that less than 25% of the townspeople are Republicans? All right, so our null hypothesis is that P is 25%. That's what we start out believing, so 0.25. Our alternative, we want to know, is it less? So we say P is less than 0.25. Our sample data, our P hat, is that 85 out of 300 are. I don't know what that works out to off the top of my head, so I'm going to type it in here. 85 divided by 300 is 0.283. All right. Next up, the mean of our sampling distribution is this 0.25. The standard deviation for our sampling distribution, again, we use this null hypothesis p-value, so 0.25, 1 minus 0.25 over our sample size, which was 300. We'll type that in, see what we get. Move the calculator out of the way here a second. Square root, 0.25 times 1 minus 0.25, close parentheses, divided by 300 gives us 0 0.025. Oh, that's nice. All right, so there's our standard deviation. Now we're going to take a look at our normal curve. So we draw a little normal curve here. In the middle, we put 0.25. And then we've got 0.283, which is way up here. And we want to know, is it less than 25%? Well, it looks like we'd have this entire side here. So we actually don't have to do the normal CDF if we want, because it's more than 50%, and more than 50% is definitely bigger than that. But if we want to type it in, we can. All right, so if you want to do normal CDF still, you can, but if it's on the wrong side of the mean, you can stop and just be like, well, we, have, we don't have evidence for it. But if we want to, we can say our lower bound is zero, our upper bound is 0 0.283, our mean is... 0.25 and our standard deviation is 0 0.025. We're going to get a big, big probability here. It's going to be bigger than 0.5, but that's okay. All right, so 0 to 0 0.283, our sample data, 0.25 and 0 0.025. Maybe I should have done greater than instead of less than, but oh well, too late now. So we get 0.9. So this is 90%. Right. So that's definitely our p-value here equals 0.90 or 91, which is definitely greater than 0 0.05, which is our alpha, which means we're going to fail to reject our hoe, which was that 25% are Republican. We do not have evidence that less than 25% are Republican. All right. So there's three examples. That is how we do the actual calculations and make conclusions.